All right, this is uh, Dr. Morton uh, recording a video for Monday, uh, the 23rd of November. So here we are, Thanksgiving week. Um, we won't, of course, have class on Friday. Uh, so we just have two classes this week, uh, Monday and Wednesday, and we will, uh, I will generate lectures for those, but the lectures are gonna be entirely re review for the final. We've covered everything, and I'm gonna spend a lot of time uh, focusing primarily on the sequential design problems. Uh, so I really do want you to, uh, to get uh, really focused on those. There are, uh, let's see, so we have um, homework 13 is due uh, on the 30th. That's Monday after Thanksgiving. And yeah, that's it. So, and that's the last homework. Um, so uh, if you get that knocked out, and some of those are also, I think some of those are also um, um, demonstration problems. So the answers are there. Um, so make sure you turn them out, turn those in. Um, okay. So let's see. Um, I will send an email out. Uh, I'm probably uh, probably uh, probably send it out uh, for sure by Monday, and uh, and and it will kind of lay out the rest of the course. But basically, um, I do, uh, so really, I think everything should be done. You should just be, uh, once you get in, turned in homework 13, that's it. You just have to uh, um, prepare for the final. And we'll talk a little bit about when, when to do the final. Uh, the, the official date on the schedule is December 9th, uh, but we probably won't do it at that time. Uh, for sure, I'll probably make it available most of the day on, on December the 9th. Um, and I might even just, uh, I might even move it earlier and, and maybe give you a, a, a couple of days to work on it, uh, so that we can, so you can get it done, um, earlier, but I don't know, but I'll, I'll take a little survey. If, if everybody wants to do it on the ninth, we'll do that. If you want me to move it up, I'll do that. We could even have it, uh, we could even do it the last day of class on the second of December. So we'll see. So be thinking about that and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of take a little, I'll get a little s survey uh, near the near the end of the week. Okay, uh, let's see. I think I'll put this up. Yeah, that'll help a little bit. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to slide myself over a little bit and I am going to bring up this Let's see, uh, that didn't work. Oh, here it is, yeah, it did work. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. I, I guess I'll get rid of this. And uh, I'll leave this up. So I'm gonna go over this test right now. And uh, we'll do this in a minute. I think the first thing I'm gonna do, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think if I did this one. Yeah, uh, uh, no, I didn't do this one. So I, I maybe do this one. So maybe I'll do this one next. Um, Okay, and then and then we'll do a, so we'll do several of these. Okay, so I'm gonna um, yeah I've got that set up there. So here we go. Okay. And I'll put this over there and get this put away. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I'm going to lower this so it's, it's a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, hopefully this will work really well. Okay, so, um, so, so here's the problem. A sequential circuit has an input X and an output Z. The output Z equals zero if the two previous inputs were the same. And let's make sure I do have this focus. Yeah, it's pretty good. Were the same and one if they were different. See the example data. Okay, so again, so z equals zero if the two previous inputs were the same, but one if they were different. So for instance, if you have, uh, so we're assuming all these are previous, so you get a zero and, uh, okay, let me make sure we got this correct. Okay, so now this is, it can be a little confusing here, so let's make sure we understand what we're talking about. So, so 
first off, if you think about this a little bit, what we what we have to remember is we have to remember that uh, what the two previous inputs were. Now here we're, we're going to start in S0. We're assuming the two previous inputs were 0, 0. And in that case, the uh, the uh, we should be outputting to 0. Now we get a 1. Okay, now, so the two previous inputs are still 0, 0, okay? So the first 0 we get is these two previous inputs. The next 0 we get is these two previous inputs. And then finally, we get an, a 0, and now these two previous inputs, 0, 1, are clearly different. So we've output a 1. Now we get a, now we get a 1, but the two previous inputs were 1, 0. That's also different. That's a 1. Here we get another 1. And we still have two previous that are one wrong, so zero and one. So that's they're different. So we get a one. Then here, the two previous inputs are one, but we get a zero. So we output a zero because these are both the same, not different. And then here, the two previous inputs are one zero, so we put out a one. And here they're zero one, so we output a one. But here they're one one again, so we output a zero. So if you want, you can think of it this way. When the two previous inputs are the same, we output a 0. Otherwise, we output a 1. All right, so we're going to start in S0. Now, if we do the graph, which is kind of the thing we want to think about here. So when we do the graph, if we're in 0, we're always remembering the two previous inputs. So, so if the two previous inputs are both 0, then we're going to output a 0. And our next zero is going to come in, and we're going to stay here because now the two previous inputs will still be zero again for when we get the next input. Okay. Now if we get a 1, then we're going to go here to remember that the two previous inputs were 0, 1. But because the two previous inputs were 0, 0, we're going to output a 0. Now here, if we get a, a, a 1, the two previous inputs are going to be 1, 1. But because these are different, we're going to output a 1. Now, if we, get a, if we get a 0, then we're going to go here because then the two previous inputs will be 0, 1. So on a 0, and we're going to output a 1 because these are different. Now, if we're here, if we're in here and we get a 1, then we're going to stay here. We're going to output a 1, and uh, we're going to output a 0, and we're, and we're going to stay here on a 1. I'll put a 0 because our two previous inputs were 1, 1. If, on the other hand, we get a 0, then we're going to go back to back to here on a 0, and we'll output a 0 because the two previous inputs will still be 1, 1. Now, in S2, if we get a 1, we're going back here because then our two previous inputs will be 0, 1, Sorry, yeah, 0, 1, or 1, 0, however you want to order them. And we'll output a 1 because they're different. See, because that's different. Now, if we get a 1, if we get a 0, our two previous inputs will be 0, 0. So now we're going to go all the way to here. And that's on the 0. And we're going to output a 1 because they're different. So whenever we leave this node, we're always going to output a 1. Whenever we leave this node, we're always going to output a 1. Whenever we leave this node or this node, we're always going to output or even if we stay here, we're always going to output a 0 because these two previous inputs will always be the same. So now we have two paths out here. We have two paths here. We have one, two paths there. And we have one, two paths here. And it's done. So then we can go up here and finish our state table. So from S1, on a 0, we're going to S2. And on a 1, we're going to S3. From S2, on a 1, on a 0, we're going to S0. And on a 1, we're going to S2. And from S3, on a 1, we're staying there. And on a 0, we're going back to S2. All right, we're going to S2. Okay, and you can see, whenever we're in S1, we're going to output 1s. So whenever we're in S... Uh, 0 or S3, we're going to output zeros. Now you could say, well, look at that. The output doesn't depend on X. Yeah, and so it actually turns it into a melee output. But it is what it is.
Uh, I mean, it actually turns it into a more uh, because it doesn't depend on x. All right, so that's the solution. And, and notice the meaning. Previous inputs were both 0, 0. Previous inputs were 0, 1. Previous inputs were 1, 0. And previous inputs were 1, 1. And you remember, you have to, you have to get the order correct. Now, based on the state table, is this a more or a melee machine? Well, it's really a, it's really a melee. But it, the outputs don't depend on x, so you could argue that in that sense it's really a more. But that's just, it, just how it worked out, I guess. All right. Okay. Any questions about that? So if you don't understand that, play, replay the tape, reread the instructions so it totally makes sense to you. Yeah. All right, let's do another one. So uh, let's do, let's, we'll do one that's slightly more complicated. So let's do this one. This is, this is an easy one. It's similar to one we've done before. Okay. So a sequence detector has one input x and an output z. So if we draw a little block diagram, we have a we have a we have our circuit, we have an input x, we have an output z. And this is this is what we're designing. Okay, the network outputs f equals zero unless it sees the sequence one zero one. So we're so we're detecting one zero one or zero zero one. Now I think I've worked this exact one before. Now uh, the network resets as soon as the target cannot be realized. Discarding the value just received. If the target is realized, it also re resets so the next value starts the next possible target. Draw the state graph for a more network. Okay, so it's more, which means this is the output. So for here the output's zero, here the output's zero, here it's zero, but here we have a target, and so it's one. Now you also should notice that the targets 101 and 001 really the first is different but the other two are the same. So we go here on we go here on either a 0 or a 1. From here we're going to go there on a 0. There's no outputs associated with the links because it's a more. And then from here if we get a 1 we're going to here. Now, when we get here, we're not going to reset on the next value because the next value could be the first one in the next sequence. So we're going to go, we're going to go here. And we're going to go there on an X, R, I mean, sorry, we're going to go there on a 0 or a 1, either one. Now, if we get an S1 and we don't get a 0, we get a 1, we have to reset according to the directions. So we're going to go back here on a 1. And if we're in S0 and we get a 0, we're also going to have to reset on a zero. And now we have two paths out of every nodes. This is a double path. This is a double path. And then one, two, one, two, and that's it. All right, so that's that's the whole schmear. Now, you notice from S3 we don't go up here because if we did, we would be throwing away that value. Now, when we go here, we are throwing away this zero, but that's what it tells us to do. And here we're throwing away that one. That's what it tells us to do, but it doesn't tell us to throw this one away. So we're in S3. So we have to think of S3 as both target and reset. All right, so if we, if we do the meanings, so if we write these out, from S0, either way we're going to S1. From S1 on a zero, we're going to S2. And on a one, we're going to S0. From S2, on a 0, we're going back to S0, but on a 1, we're going to S3. From S3, regardless, we're going to S1. Here, we're going to output a 1, and everywhere else, a 0. The meaning, we have reset, first item, second item, target, and reset. That's how it works. Okay. Now remember, it's a more. Because it's a more, the outputs are associated with the nodes. The output does not depend on x. There's no an x equals 0, x equals 1 column here. There's just a single output because it's directly associated with the state. 
Now to finish this up, we would assign, we do flip-flop state assignment. We have four states, so we'd use two flip-flops. And we could do them in binary order, or we could try the other two possible non-equivalent ways, which would be uh, z z 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, or that would be binary, or we could do 0, 1, 3, 2, or 0, 3, 1, 2. Those are the three non-equivalents. Anything else uh, w works out to be the same amount of hardware. And you, and you should probably try that if you're, if you're going for minimal, minimal, uh, minimal chip area design and an integrated circuit. All right. Okay. That's pretty much it for that. All right. Let's, let's look at this one. So this is a, so this is a, this is a, a SM chart. I'm going to get just a little bit bigger so you can see the whole thing. Oops, just a little bit bigger. Okay, that's pretty good. Well, it's actually too good. All right. You're to finish a state machine chart for a, pro for a problem with an input X and an output Z, where... Z equals zero, except when the target is 1101 is detected. Overlapping targets are allowed. Use Mealy Machine. Do straight binary flip-flop state assignment for each block and fill in uh, the, the state assignment at the AB equals on each of the blocks, shown by the dashed lines. Finish the SM chart connections and then write in DA, DB, Z equations below. Z is assumed to zero if the conditional assignment is not in the path. Okay, so the only place Z is going to be one is right here. Everywhere else, Z is going to be zero. And there's only one output Z. Now, Z is zero except if we have the target one, one, zero. So our target here, we're looking for, we're looking for the target, uh, we're looking for the target one, one, zero, one. That's the target, okay? So keep that in mind. It's right here. Okay, so okay, so um, so we're going to finish the state graph first. Okay, so so it's kind of we got a lot of hints here. So we're in S zero. We're looking for the target one zero one zero one. So if we get a zero, we still have nothing. So we x so. We read X. If it's a zero, we're going to go out and back in here. If we get a one, however, we're going over here and into S1. Now in S1, we're looking for another one. So if we get another one, we're going over here. But if we get a zero, then we're going to... Then, uh, yeah, we have nothing. So we're going to go back to S0. I'll put a little arrow in here. Now, in S2, we're looking for a 0. So if we get a 0, we're going to go down here and connect. But if we get a 1, now if we get a 1, we we could just go back here because we would still have we would have 1 1 1, which basically would still satisfy the 1 1 for the first two elements. So we could go to S1 because was as uh, sorry actually we could stay here my bad because we'd have the first two ones so we just stay here we re-enter right there now we're in s3 where we have one one we have one one zero and we're waiting for that last one so if we get that last one we're going to make z equal one and then where are we going to go we're going to go back to where we have the first one memorized so that would be right here we would go back to s1 what if we get a zero well now we have uh we have one one zero zero so we don't have anything in our sequence so we would just have to go back and start over and we could do that by that and of course we don't have 
the only place that z is going to be 1 is right here. All right, so now let's fill in our, our flip-flop state assignment. So 0, 0 here for a, b, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, and finally 1, 1. Now we, now we can just write down our, our, our equations for our flip-flop inputs, which would be our dA. Let's see, I'm going to slide the camera over here. something like that yeah so we have da db and dc so our the, sorry no dc z our output so our output is really easy we'll do that first the z is only a one the only place it's a one and the only one we have to consider then is when a when we're in this s3 and x is a one well we're in s3 when a and b are both one so that's a, b, x. So z just equals a, b, x. Now da, what about da? We have to find all the paths into nodes where a is 1. Well, a is 1 here, and a is 1 here. It's 0 here and 0 there. So we need to have all the paths into this node, s2, and all the paths into s3. There's only one path into s3, and that comes from s2. And that would be a, b prime, x prime. So that's a b prime x prime plus now we also have to we, we also have to do the paths into s2 where a is 1. It turns out there are two paths. One comes from s2 and that's a b prime x and uh, the other one comes from S1, which is A prime B X, which is A prime B X. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. So now DB, DB is a one here and a one here. So we still have to do the same one that we did for this, which would be uh, A B prime X prime. But then we have to add to it the, all the paths into here. Now one path comes in from S0, so that would be A prime B prime X. Plus, we have a path coming in from down S3 when X is a 1, and that would be A B X. Now these can be simplified a little bit maybe, or maybe not doesn't really matter. I guess these really can't. Uh, this one could be. That could be simplified to uh, AB prime. And yeah, that would be it. Uh, AB prime. And I think that then you could drop the A prime there and just have BX maybe. I don't know. Anyway. Um, all right. So now you can now you can draw the state graph. So from state S0 on a on a 1 on a 1, we go to S1, and we output a 0. And then from S1 on a 1, we go to S2, and output a 0. And then from S2 on a 0, oh crap, This I'm, I'm going to change this. Well, that's S3. I'm going to put a 2 there, and I'm going to change this to 3, because that's irritating me. And this is going to be 1, 1, and this is going to be 1, 1, 0. We're going to go here on a 0 and output a 0. And then from S3, if we get a 1, we're going back to S1, and we're outputting a 1 for a target. Now, if we're in S1, and we get a, and we get, uh, a 0, then we don't really have anything, so we have to go back here on a 0 and output a 0. If we're in S2 and we get a 0, we're going here. But if we get a 1, we can stay here and output a 0. And from S3, on a 1, we're going up to S1 and we're having a target. But if we get a 0, we're going to have to go to S0 and output a 0. 
All right, so that's your that's your state graph. I didn't read the notes too well, so I messed up. Okay, so any questions about that? Well, unfortunately, we can't have any on a video. Um, that's why I'm going to do some live ones the week after Thanksgiving. Both Monday and Wednesday we'll do live ones. Okay, let's do... Uh, I think that's it for that. That's it for that. I think there's one more here. Uh, this one, maybe. Uh, I can't remember. Um... No, I think I, I think I did that one. Okay, so I did that one. All right, so yeah. All right, so let me, uh, I'm going to generate some more things to do then. Let me pause it. Okay, so we'll work on this one now. Now, um, come on, move on. Cables out of the way here. Okay, so let's look at this problem. So a sequential circuit has an input X and an output Z. The output is the same as what the input was two clock cycles earlier. See the example data, complete the state table and graph. Note when the specifying previous inputs, the order is two clock cycles ago, one clock cycle ago. So, so if we wrote it zero X, Y, X would be two clock cycles ago, Y would be one clock cycles ago. Okay? Okay, so it's good, you have to have some kind of... Thus, the previous input, zero, one, means two clock cycles ago, it was zero, and last clock cycle, the input was one. On a graph, use a slash between the input and output. Based on the state table, is this a Moore or a Mealy machine? Well, okay, notice here, the output is um, is depends on x. Uh, well, actually, it doesn't. But we have a column for x equals zero and a column for x equals one. And so, because of that, then um, uh, because of that, then uh, it's a mealy. So okay. And um, remember, in a mealy, the outputs are going to be on the links, not on the nodes. Okay. But in this case, you could well well. It's a melee. Um, okay, so here's your input stream. We get an X in, uh, and so that, that now means, and we'll assume that all the prior inputs were zeros. So we're going to start here assuming that the prior inputs were zero, zero. Okay? Now, X is Z, Z, will, Z is the same as the output what it was two clock cycles ago. So, so in this case, two clock cycles ago it was X. So when we get the next input, we're going to output whatever this was. So since our two previous clock cycles uh, ago were zero and one clock cycle ago was zero, when we get the next input, we're going to output that zero. So obviously we'll output a zero, regardless of whether we get x at zero or one, because it depends on that value from two clock cycles earlier. Okay. And, uh, all right. So, uh, it, so in S0 then, uh, if x equals 0, we're going to stay here because we still have zeros. And we're going to output a 0 because uh, this means 0, 0. So we output this one. And this one means 0, 1. So we output this one. This means 1, 0. So we output this one. And this one means 1, 1. So we output that one. Okay, now if we get a 1, we're going here, and we're going to output the 0 because we're still outputting this. Now if we're in S1 and we get a 1, then we're going to have two 1s, 
So we're going to go here. It's very similar to this other problem, but it's not the same. And we're going to output a zero. If, on the other hand, uh, we get a uh, we get a zero, then we're going to go here, and we're still going to output a zero because we're doing this. Now in S2, if we get a one, we're going to go back here and output a one. And if we output as and if we get a zero, then we're going all the way back here on a zero and we're going to output that one. Now here we're going to we're going to go here on a one and output a one because of that set oldest value. And if we get a zero, now a zero, we're going to have our oldest value is going to be a one and the new value is a zero, so that'll put us here. And that's on a zero, but we'll output the one because that's our oldest value. And that's it. And then we can copy those over. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that wasn't the same as this one, right? So, yeah, this one, it was just, a, if the two previous inputs were the same, we, we uh, yeah, it was a different problem, but, it, but the graph is uh, strikingly similar. So that might be a good one to keep in mind. You might see one of these. All right, so in S2, uh, sorry, in, in node S, in S1, we're going to go to S0 on a 0, and S1 on a 1. In S1, we're going to go to S2 on a 0, and on a 1, we're going to S3. From S2 on a 1, we're going back to S1, uh, uh, S1, and on a 0, we're going back to S0. And from S3, we're staying there on a 1, and on a zero, we're going back to S2. And that is it. That's all there is to it. Yeah, it's a little hard to see these, but that's this is S this is this is S0, this is S1, this is S2, and S3. Okay. Yeah, I guess I could have made this slightly bigger. Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay. All right. Well, I think. So how are we doing? Yeah. So let me let me uh, work a couple of other things. So let's let's talk about this one, for instance. So here we have a K map, and we have. Uh, so what's this? What's the simplest answer? The simplest answer is to square do these four and these four. Now there is a consensus term. What's the consensus term? The consensus term is this. It's not this. It's this whole thing. Because the consensus term should always be a prime implicant. And this wouldn't be a prime implicant. So what is this one? Well, with our alternate labels, it's easy. This is A. Of course, this is A prime. This is the center two columns are B. And the out two rows are B prime. This, the bottom two rows are C and the middle two rows are D and the upper row and the bottom row are D prime and up here it's C prime all right so just looking at this it's A prime C and this is A D and this whole loop here is simply C D because you look and see what drops so what variables change here well the C, it's 1 down here and 0 up here, so it drops. And the B, it's 1 here and 0 here, so it drops. So that gives you A, D. You know when you combine two boxes, you're going to get a three-variable term. If you combine four boxes, you're going to get a two-variable term. If you combine eight boxes, you're, you're going to get a one-variable term. And if you combine all 16 boxes, you're going to get a constant, 1. Okay. So, so loop the terms for the minimum solution. So that would be these two. Loop with dash lines any consensus term. So that would be so that would be this one. Circle which transition could cause a hazard. So we have uh, three transitions spec. This one's A B C D zero one 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 
to 1111. So, so 1111 is this square here. All right, that's F. And 0111 is 7. That's this square here. So is it the transition from here to here? Yeah, actually, it is, because you're going from this group of 4 to this group of 4. What about the other ones? From 0, 1, 0, 0. So 0, 1, 0, 0. So that would be uh, here to 0, 1, 0, 1. 0, 1, 0, 1 to here. Well, yeah, that's nothing. And our, how about from 1, 1, 1, 1 to 1, 1, 0, 1? So that's, that's from here to uh, 1, 1, 0, 1. So that's up here. Yeah, and that wouldn't do anything because you're staying inside this term. So none of these were, so neither A nor C, uh, D could change. So what changes, what changes from, so if the transition we're interested in is transitioning from this one, which is A, D to A prime C to A prime C, what variable's changing? It's the A variable that's changing. Is there an A variable in this term? This term is CD. Any variables there? No. So you likely need to add this consensus term in situations where the downstream logic was very slow. No, if the downstream logic was very slow, your hazard would be a very short pulse, so you wouldn't have to worry about it. All right. And what is the consensus term? Well, the consensus term is just CD. And you can add that or not. Now remember, the consensus theorem, you should see A, A prime, so the consensus term would be CD. Well, DC, whatever. All right. Um, so let me, let me just do, see if there's anything else we need to do here. Let's do this flip-flop problem, and I'll see if I can, I'll see if I can, and then maybe next week I'll work a few, work a few of the other ones, but maybe I'll see if I can come down this thing a little bit. Okay, so let's look at the, let's look at the, uh, at the very log code. Okay, so first off, so we have some boilerplate stuff. We don't really need to pay attention. So entity, flip-flop is port D, clock, clear knot, set knot, in standard logic, and Q and Q prime, out standard logic. So the two outputs are Q and Q prime, and we have a D input, so it's a D flip-flop. We have a clock. We have an asynchronous clear knot and an asynchronous set knot. So they're going to be active low. All right? So let's look at this. So look at this flip-flop. What kind of flip-flop does the VHDL, VHDL code show? Well, and then down here, we, we're, we're pretty confident it's a D because that's a D there. But let's look. Let's look at the logic down here. So it says, so here's the architecture. Uh, architecture flip-flop A of flip-flop is, and then... Uh, we have a temporary signal, uh, temp, which is standard logic. Okay, so we have a process block. Here's our sensitivity list. What's in the sensitivity list? Our clock, our set knot, and our clear knot. If the clear knot is zero, then temp equals zero. Else if uh, set knot is else if set knot is zero, then temp equals one. And finally, else if clock tick event and clock equals zero. So is that going to be falling edge or rising edge? Well, that's that's a falling edge because clock tick event, remember that tells us the clock has just changed and now it's zero. So that means it fell from one to zero. Then D is assigned to temp. And then here we have Q equals temp and Q prime equals not temp. And that's the end of it. And our process block is just this. These are concurrent. So they're, 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 they're continuous assignments. These are, these are uh, sequential assignments. All right, so armed with this, we should be able to do it now. 
So what kind of flip-flop does this show? It shows a D. How many different states can this flip-flop remember all by itself? Well, flip-flops can remember one bit, either a zero or a one. Oh, sorry, so it can remember two different states. Um, will this process block execute on a change in D? Well, is D in the sensitivity list over here? No. Just clock, set not, and clear not. D appears down here, but it's not in the sensitivity list, so it won't trigger execution. Okay. Will the process block execute on a change in D? No, it will not. Is the clock rising or falling? Well, because it clock tick event and clock equals zero, we know it's a falling edge clock. Label the three blanks, A, B, C, and add bubbles as needed. All right, so, so we have Q and Q prime. We have our clock. It's a falling edge clock, so maybe we go ahead and add the bubble here. I'll darken mine in. You don't have to. You can make a circle. So, but we have two asynchronous inputs. So one's a clear knot. So we'll say C L R knot and S E T knot. And what's this? We'll say this is the D input. Now, do these need bubbles? Yes, they do. They both need bubbles. All right. If clear knot equals zero and set knot equals zero, then what does Q equal? Well, if you look at the code, the first if statement checks clear knot. If that statement is true, then this else if and this else if are never evaluated. So that means if clear knot is zero, even if set knot is zero, clear knot's going to take precedence and the, the temp's going to be equal to zero, which means Q is going to be equal to zero and Q prime to one. So Q will equal one. I'm sorry, zero. My bad. Wait, wait, um, yeah, but let me just, yeah, clear, yeah, right. This, this, the signal temp is not in the port list. That's right. It's an internal signal and it's only used inside the, 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 the pro, it's only used inside of the architecture. It's not ever presented to the outside world. All right, so that's that. Okay, I think uh, we'll maybe do one more. Let me, I, I did this one the other day, but I think I'm gonna, did I do this one? Let's see. Yeah, I did. Uh, oh, maybe not. Um, No, I didn't do I, I didn't do that. But I, I think I, I kind of talked about this one, but I didn't really fill it out. So I'm going to do this one. All right. So I'll give you one like this, uh, and you'll have to fill it out. Okay. So the first thing is, is this a melee or a more? Well, the outputs are associated with the nodes, so we know it's a we know it's a more. And S0, S1, and S2 are all outputs of one, but S3 is a zero. Now. Notice that there's x2 and x1. There's two inputs. And there's four possibilities for each of those. And we've got the, the, the links are labeled. The links don't show any outputs because the outputs are associated with the nodes. So let's go through this. So S0, on 0, 0, we stay here. OK, that's fine. On a 0, 1, a 0, 1, we go down to S3 here. On a 1, 0, we go to S1, and on a 1, 1, we go down here to S2. Okay, let's go to S1. What do we do? So on 0, 0, and 1, 1, we go to S3. 0, 0, S3, 1, 1, S3. Uh, then what do we do on 0, 1? On 0, 1, we go back to S0, and on a 1, 0, we stay in S1. Now, S2. S2, uh, on 0, 0, we stay there. On 0, 1, and 1, 1, we go to S3. And on uh, 1, 0, we go back to S0. 
And what about S3? On S3, on a 0, 0, we go back to S0. But everything else, we stay there. 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. All right, now we've filled out the truth table, and we're good. Now, if we were going to do the problem, the next thing would be flip-flop state assignment. And then after flip-flop state assignment, uh, then we would do it, fill it, substitute those in for the transition table, and then we would, uh, and and then we would do the k-maps. And uh, in this case, what would the variables be? Well, we'd have a and b because we have four states. We have to have two flip-flops, and we have two inputs x2 and x1. So normally at the top we would put x2, x1, and down the side we would put a and b, and that would actually work pretty well. All right, so we'd have we'd have our four variable truth tables. One for D input, one for the uh, D sub A input, one for the D sub B, and our output would be real simple. It only depends on A and B, so it would just be, well, let's do the output map just for grins, since we don't even have to assign any flip-flops. So the output map, let's say if we, so it's just gonna be A and B, put A in the top and B on the side. So it's one, 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 zero. So we have to have this and this. So that's going to be, this is going to be B prime plus A prime. All right, so that pretty well does that. Okay, I think I'm going to stop with that. So hopefully this will give you some, some good things. I will work, um, I will work, uh, I, I will work, uh, some of the, uh, I work some of the switching algebra problems. There, there's only going to be a couple of them. I, I'm not going to make a big deal out of the switching algebra. So there, but I, there will be a couple of those problems on the test. Um, so uh, make sure you make sure you turn in homework 13. Uh, it's fairly easy. Don't miss the opportunity. Remember, all you need is 50% on at least 10 homeworks to get full credit. Obviously, if you're missing one or two, that's you'll still be pretty okay. You'll get if you're missing one, you'll get ninety percent. Missing two, you get eighty percent of the recitation grade. Uh, but if you're missing a bunch of them, it will hurt you. And I, I did give you last week as an opportunity to catch up. So I hope a lot of people caught up. I probably shouldn't have done that, but I I'm soft-hearted, so I did. I threw you a bone because it's COVID. But. Uh, I make sure everybody does the final when we get around to the final. Uh, and be thinking about whether you want to do it on the day, uh, on the final exam period day, or whether you would prefer to do it uh, earlier. And if you want to do it earlier, then um, I'll, I think what I'll do is next, next week, I'll do the Zoom lectures live. Uh, and I'll ask in both those lectures, and then you can tell me. I, uh, probably a good time to do it would be, would be, uh, yeah, yeah, maybe early in the final exam period. I don't know. Anyway, so you tell me, you be thinking about it. Let me know whether you want to wait till the uh, the date it was assigned, which I forget. Let's see when was that date. It was, oh, I don't have it there, but it will pull it up. Yeah, December the 9th was the day. So that's the that's the official day. So, yeah. So be thinking about whether you want to do it December the 9th or not. All right. I will uh, I will see you Wednesday.